Welcome to the No More Leafies podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle. And we're just two best friends and ex Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 2004 romantic drama, The Notebook. It is finally here, Jackie. I'm not excited. But I am excited that we have our wonderful guest, Christina, who is joining us for this episode to kind of level out the playing field. <laughs> yes. Yay, hi. Welcome, Christina. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't listened to the episode where we introduce who this wonderful guest, Christina, is yet, you should just press pause, go back, listen to our trailer episode, get to know Christina, hear her shade me a little bit. If you like to shade me, it's full of shade. You need an umbrella. <laughs> and then come back and listen to the rest of this episode. But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. What happened? What do you mean? I thought we but were perfectly in. We were not. <laughs> oh, okay, let's try again. Sorry. <clears throat> How? Oh. How? <laughs> I'm just gonna do the whole whole sentence again. Okay. I need my time in. I need my count in. Okay. All right. But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. Keeping. One day we'll get it right. Ooh. If you love the podcast and you want to support us, here are a few ways you can. Did you know writing a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? If you want to be featured and help us grow, head to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, Good Pods, or your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review. Have you subscribed to our show yet on your favorite podcast platform? Make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can get alerts when new episodes are live. And have you checked out our Patreon yet? Patreon.com slash no more late fees. You can receive exclusive content, stickers, lives, access to our burn aughts playlist. We have Ask Me Anything. We have some super special GIFs that only our Patreon members have <laughs> access to. So if you want to use those and react as Danielle does, because that face tells no lies, it does head on not. over to Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into the notebook. Unless you were living under a rock, you must have been living under a rock if you didn't know about this movie. I'll just tell you a little bit about it. The notebook is about a poor yet passionate young man a.k.a. Ryan Gosling, who falls in love with a rich young woman, Rachel McAdams, giving her a sense of freedom, but they are soon separated because of their social differences. The movie stars Ryan Gosling, Rachel McAdams, James Gardner, Gina Rollins, James Marston, Kevin Conley, Sam Shepard, and Joan Allen. The movie is directed by Nick Casavitas. I hope I said that right. Written by Nicholas Sparks and Jan Sardi, and you can watch it on YouTube, Google, and Apple for $3.99 for rent. I do not know why this movie is not streaming for free somewhere. Luckily, we had it on our Apple account, but really, seriously, why is this not on a free streaming site? It it's a great question. I, I rewatched it today and had to rent it. It's ridiculous. It's what it is. And I don't understand. But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating or Y2K versions of ourselves we give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would plan repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Uh, okay, but nothing to write home about. And same day rental. Plantation murder house trash. Straight up trash. Or Jackie's feelings about this movie. I would like to put a trigger warning on this episode <laughs> that Jackie has <laughs> coal in her heart and the notebook <laughs> is something she's probably about to shit on. 
What? Oh, probably there is a hundred percent chance of shitting. Oh, I gotta hear this. A hundred percent chance of cloudy days, y'all. Mm-mm. All right, Christina, we're gonna start with you. You, okay. Your Y two K rating. I know you were just a bebe when this movie came out. <laughs> Tell me again. All right, I think my Y two K rating is the same as what I would rate it today, which is five day rental. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, mine is would buy it because I do have it on DVD. <laughs> God Let help us. Let me tell you the story <laughs> of watching this movie for the first time. Let me take uh, a little picture. Danielle and I did watch it together. I was at my sister's apartment in college. Shout out, Heather. Holla. And it was Heather, her best friend, Chelsea, Danielle. We're all sitting on the couch. I was sitting on the floor, leaning up against the couch. Whole movie happens. <laughs> like, the old people die at the end. Spoiler alert. <laughs> the credits start to roll. I probably saw the back of my brain. I rolled my eyes so hard as I turned around to be like, what was that piece of garbage? And every person on the couch is hysterically crying and like, that was the best movie ever. I felt like I was in... <laughs> another like dimension like, it was a bizarre <laughs> world because i was like in what world was that a good movie i know i am in the minority but i will tell you my reasons as we go through this movie because danielle did ask while we were re-watching it she's like how can you not at least respect the fact that it's like well written well shot and i i did think about it and i did have some answers but i did not Want to give all the answers until we recorded the episode. So what is your rating, Jackie? So everyone can send hate <laughs> it is, mail. It is a same day rental. This episode's not going to get any better with the slander. It's fine. That's so unfortunate. <laughs> we have two rational people on this panel today. Haters going to hate. What can we say? So Jackie and I are together. So me, Jackie, and Ken watch the movie. Now, Ken does this wonderful thing where sometimes, like, if he didn't start watching it when we started watching it, he'll just, like, stand and pretend he's not watching it and have all this commentary and then <laughs> say, oh, no, no, I'm not watching. Sooner than later, he's on the couch. He's watching. He's fully enthralled with us. He and does love a melodrama. Yes. So I said to Jackie this week that pretty much she married the male version of me from a movie standpoint. Like Ken and I could be on the, like a, what, what is it called? The newlywed game when it comes to <laughs> our movies. He loves a rom-com. He loves Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice. He loves it. Eats it right up. And he just kept on saying, how could you not love this movie? Yeah, I, I was getting it from both sides because he was like, there's nothing wrong with this movie. What? How can you hate this movie? I was like... It doesn't give you the feels at all. Like, you didn't feel no, anything? No. I was sad that like old this people died at, at the end, but that was about it. We did all cry at yes. the end of the movie. Yeah. How could you not? Right. Not even. I started crying before the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Any, anywho. So let's get into this box office. It's no surprise that this movie killed in the box office because if America had a sweetheart, it's the damn notebook. Its budget was $29 million. It made $117.8 million worldwide. It is the 15th highest grossing romantic drama film of all time. Roger Ebert... Lil Raj, shout out to Roll Call, of the Chicago Sun-Times praised the film, awarding it three and a half stars out of four. Three and a half stars out of four. How many Calling... star reviews has he given? You go ahead and look that up, Miss Penny. <laughs> calling the photography striking in its rich, saturated effects and stating that the actors are blessed by good material. In June of 2010, Entertainment Weekly included Ali and Noah in its list of the 100 greatest characters of the last 20 years. And we cannot 
forget that the two stars, Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams, won the MTV Movies Award for Best Kiss in 2005 and literally changed how the movie, that category was done because they were like the first to like do that. You guys remember they did that crazy lift and make out session when they got their award. After that, everybody knew they had to kiss once they won that award. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Just wanted to set the scene of what, <laughs> what the consensus was about this movie in the national side guys. Oh okay. boy. But I agree um, with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Before we really start breaking down the movie, this movie did go back and forth through a lot of different hands. This has happened with a few movies we've done so far where we've seen like many different directors, many different actors were attached. So originally Jeremy Levin was hired to write the script which caught the attention of Steven Spielberg in, a, in 1998. So this movie came out in 2004. So that kind of gives you a sense of like how long it was bouncing around. And Steven Spielberg wanted Tom Cruise as Noah Calhoun, question mark, question mark, question mark. Mm. I'm very glad that didn't happen. Yeah. I it would have been out immediately. <laughs> Jackie wouldn't have saw the movie if Tom nope. Cruise wasn't it. But unfortunately, due to Spielberg's commitment to other projects, that led Jim Sheridan to becoming attached to direct the following year in 99. But then it got pushed back because of rewrites. And then Sheridan backed out in 2000 and Martin Campbell entered negotiations to direct in 2001. And then it was finally, he was replaced by Nick Cassavetes in the year following. So yeah, tons of people touched that movie and a lot of people were in, in the rankings for casting. So there was a nationwide search conducted to find the right actress to play Allie. Actresses who auditioned for their role included Jessica Biel, Britney Spears, mm -hmm. Ashley Judd, Reese Witherspoon, and then Rachel McAdams was ultimately cast. Britney Spears? Yes. Could you imagine? So here, this is That's where, a mess, right? where my mind. heart gets very a flutter. So I don't know if I've ever said this on the show, but I was obsessed with the Mickey Mouse Club on Disney Channel. So when we moved to Florida from New York and I finally got the Disney Channel, your bitch was all about it, okay? All day, <laughs> every day. Kids Incorporated, Mickey Mouse Club. And I, like, really felt, I felt like I was being punished that I couldn't go to Buena Vista to go be in the audience and watch my favorite show. And then, like, when we got to high school, all the people that I watched on the Mickey Mouse Club when I was in elementary school blew the fuck up. We had NSYNC, we had JC, we had Justin Timberlake, then Britney came out, we had Christina Aguilera, mm -hmm. Ryan and Gosling. so Ryan mm -hmm. Gosling was also on the Mickey Mouse Club, and when, so when it happened, when that new cast came, it was Ryan Gosling, Christina Aguilera, Justin Timberlake, and Britney Spears, as well as three other castmates, Nate, Ryan, no, it's not Ryan. Can't remember the other two, Nikki and another boy that I can't remember, but I'm damn good for remembering the other two, I would say, cause I am surprised by that with my memory. They, <laughs> when they came on the show, like I remember when that new cast came. And so the fact that Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears almost were in the running against Ryan, who lived with Justin Timberlake for a while when he was auditioning because he's from Did Canada. They? Yeah, they became good friends when they were on the Mickey Mouse Club and Ryan's mom let, you know, had Justin's mom take care of Ryan so that he can audition in the States. And uh, so, yeah, they competed for this role, but I don't think that Justin would have had the chops for this movie no. at all. Mm -mm. No. Who were the other, what other girls did you say? Jessica, did you say Jessica Alba? Jessica, Jessica Beale. Beale. So Jessica Beale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she actually auditioned when she was doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And mm -hmm. so she like literally had blood splatter on her auditioning for the role. That's funny. See, yeah. I liked her in that, but I can't imagine. I, I don't think I've ever seen her in a wrong or like a, a romantic 
sort of role. I have, well, she's been, she was in I'll Be Home for Christmas and she was in Summer Catch with Freddie Prince Jr. Mm-hmm. She's been in a few, a few things. She was in Valentine's Day. Oh, right. Yeah. No, still don't think she would have been right. No, I don't. I, I really do think you needed the acting chops. Like I could have saw a Reese Witherspoon in this. Like this is yeah. right up her alley. She wouldn't have had, had to pretend with the Southern accent either. Yeah. Have you ever seen Rachel McAdams audition tape for this movie? No. Oh, it's good. Really? I mean, she was like, yeah, emotional, like on demand. She, I mean, there was no question. She went in there and like killed it. Which is crazy. Cause she got the script literally a day before she went for her audition. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. So, I mean, watching it, you're like, there's no, there's no other option. <laughs> There was a, a a bit of nepotism in this movie. Really? A little reverse. So Nick Cassavetes, the director, cast his mom as the older Allie. His mother is Gina Rollins. So oh, I had no idea. I didn't know that either. But she was so cute. Like she, she was. And I think totally she's a perfect saw, fit. Yeah, I totally saw her as elder alley mm-hmm. yeah like it, it fit perfectly so it wasn't like a miscast or anything yeah it was just a happy happenstance mm-hmm. that it all worked out that way yeah but i good in it. james gardner did not him and ryan not in the in the slightest i was just thinking the same thing that and was yeah and it's funny because George Clooney was going to play noah and the older version was going to be paul newman and i'm like that wouldn't have looked right at all. It's funny how they had like older actors and I just feel mm-hmm. like they're supposed to be in their teens and twenties and, and some of the movies. So that just felt weird, but I could have seen Paul Newman playing the older version of Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Yes, just I thinking agree. That, yeah. Yep. So when they did that photo album, and they were showing like younger versions of uh, Gina and like they used their actual pictures. I was like, mm, he looks the same age as Ryan, as Noah, when we last saw them together. What is happening? The same. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that was a so mix for weird. me. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know why they didn't just like make them look older a little bit. I, I don't know. That always takes well, me out of the movie those pictures were not fabricated. That is Gina Rollins's like photo album. And then they just Photoshop young James Garner on her husband's face for all those photos. Oh, wow. Smart. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell those were her actual pictures that I could see, but yeah, her husband didn't look a little off to me. They were both banging in their day. I'm not going to, I give it to them. Oh, she was banging for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But my mom loved James Garner and some of those Western movies and stuff. Mm. He could he could get it too. Mm-hmm. I gotta Google young James Gardner. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Jackie, you ready? As I'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> so the movie opens. We are in what state are we in? South Carolina? I think so, yeah. Is that where we are? Okay. I'm guessing. Yeah, because they go to Charleston, right? Yeah. 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 So the movie opens on a lake. The longest credits. I was like, can we fast forward it? (laughs) And Jackie was like, no. (laughs) I need the full dragging on. She was like, if you're going to suffer, if I'm going to suffer, you're going to suffer. You didn't like the opening credit? It's cute. I mean, it was a song, you know. (laughs) <clears throat> so there's like a rowboat someone's on the water rowing a boat then we see like this huge plantation on the water and we are introduced to an older lady she's at the window kind of looking out at the the man rowing the boat there is some voice over that he is just a common man who led a common life and for some reason I mean, I know the reason it was to throw off the audience. They call older <laughs> Noah Duke. Yeah. So Duke comes to read to this lady every day. You ain't never had a nickname, Jackie. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, 
if, that if became it was, a, mm. well, and if it was like Finn had ca- always called him Duke or something, like if, if like it could have been a real easy like throwaway yeah, line true. that most people would have missed anyway. Yeah, but then like some reason why he was called Duke. Yeah. True. Uh, or like call him Cal because at least that's part of his last name. True. Yeah. Like yeah. something. So he walks in and he he has his story he's gonna read to this lady. The nurses tell him it's not a good day. And then he begins telling her what you come to find out is the story of their lives. So it is June of nineteen forty, and it this movie is told in flashbacks and then it'll come to present day here and there. So we see Allie is at a carnival with her friends. She's on the bumper cars and Noah sees her and is immediately enamored. Okay, so I'll just get out of the way why (laughs) this movie does not resonate with me. Okay, let's hear it. Noah proves himself over and over and over again to be a stand-up dude that is willing to do anything for her. She literally does the bare minimum. She's just pretty. That's what is attracted to him. Like, I find no qualities that endear me to Allie. I I don't have a problem with that statement. So, like, it's very hard for me, like, why is he so invested in her when, like, it, it would have been really easy to just, just show me something. Like, when he's talking about, like, I'm going to build this house one day, she literally is like, well, don't I get a say instead of like, oh, I can help you do this or I can do this to make this house a home. Like, instead, I was like, what are you going to do for me? She's a kept woman, Jackie. Yeah, I was going to say, that's so interesting that you say that. She's living the dream. I yeah. get that, yeah, but at the same house. time, she prides herself on rebelling from her upbringing. Mm. But doesn't show anything aside from learning how to drive a car which her mom drives a car, so that's not even really that wild and crazy. Yeah. There's nothing that endears me to Allie. Well, I think that that's why Rachel McAdams was such an important factor in this movie. The interesting thing is that from the book to screen adaptation, Allie actually doesn't have a huge role in the book. So the source material doesn't give her a lot to work with in the Mm. first place. The entire book is from the perspective of Noah, but I think because of Rachel McAdams just being such a strong lead, they expanded her role. So that probably explains some of the gaps of why we're not really seeing much that makes us kind of like attached or just to see what Noah sees about Allie. But it is kind of interesting because it is from a male perspective, so much so that the value, especially back then, of what a woman was, was good looks. If she came from a decent family, like, I think now, nowadays, we actually, you know, there's, we look for more in partnerships. But, but he didn't even care about any of that. So, like, what attracted him to she was her? Pretty. And we're that talking aside we, from we are talking know. initially, right? Not after. No, they like start throughout to fall the in movie, love. like I, I didn't really feel like she was a fifty-fifty partner. Well, it I was think him like putting forth the effort a hundred percent of the time. I, I won't in, say 100%, 90%. It, I feel like that's usually the case, though, with, like, traditional courtships, right? You have, like, the the man is attracted to the woman based on, like, physical attraction. And then, you know, you have common commonalities between the two of you, but he's pursuing her. And then I think what's endearing about her is how much she loved him and didn't care about what her parents said regardless of whether or not he was good for her. I think that's when, that's when I started to feel like a, a, a resonance with her and her character. Cause it's like, Oh, okay. I've been in that, you know, my I parents also... hated all my boyfriends. Too. 
<laughs> I also think that he does like he actually does list in the movie like the their he talks about the relationship but why it works. And he, he said it a few times in the movie that she really challenged him. You know, like, I think if he didn't meet Allie, he would have, like he said, he would have been a common man, a regular man done just the bare minimum. He didn't want to, he didn't aspire to much or whatever, but because of her background and who she was as a person, I think that really pushed him to, to, to go way outside of his peer view of what, like what he was used to. And the way his friends described him, it didn't seem like that was his personality to like, they said, whatever he wants, he does go after it pretty hard, but you could tell from, I forgot the girl's name, the, his friend's girlfriend, like he did not approach women the way that he did with Allie. It was like the moment he saw her, he was, that was it for him. And he went at it like full blast. But I think normally he was a quiet kind of shy person. So yeah. I just think it, it could have been shown better where she's like, because they show them bickering, but they yeah. don't ever show like her putting him in his place and like backing it up and like him yeah. being like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like there was no debating where it's like, okay, yeah, she really does keep him in check when he starts acting a fool or whatever. Mm. Like it, it was just, just for me, the character of Ali, I, I love Rachel McAdams. She was beautiful in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, her outfits to die for it, just the character itself. There was just nothing for me. I think one of the more endearing parts about this movie and why I think it resonates for so many women is because in a lot of movies, we're kind of taught that as women to be with somebody or to get like a quality guy to be attracted to them, we have to do all these things. We get a makeover, we get to do all these things. In this movie, it showed just like a man absolutely adoring the woman and her just being herself. Allie, he, he said she was a brat. She was this, whatever, but he absolutely loved her in all her flaws and she didn't have to do anything. She didn't have to earn him. She didn't have to, she just had to show up and he adored her to the day he took his last breath. And I think that speaks to a lot of women because it's not something that you necessarily see every day in your life, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So Noah jumps over the the gate at the bumper cars and is like, "You want to, you want to dance with me?" She keeps rejecting him. He then follows her to the Ferris wheel where she's she gets on it with another dude, and he like jumps on the car. There's no safety no, apparatus so on that Ferris wheel. <laughs> Very insane. And they get to almost the top, and he's like still asking her out, still pursuing her. And this scene like made me uncomfortable. Like she has literally told you no multiple yeah. times. Oh, I want to. Okay. I have something to say about that, but Go ahead. Go ahead. well, I was just thinking it's funny because looking at this part of what makes this movie, like, I don't know, for me, it's like, Oh, uh, it's how much he pursued her despite her rejections at first. Right. And it's like, Oh my goodness. Like I would love for a man to, pursue me like that but if a man did that present day like sir where do you I live because i'm I serving said. you with a restraining order like yeah. we don't have a problem and so i just think it's funny like why do you think we find it endearing in movies that are set in the past versus today where that wouldn't fly i don't you know I think it's just like how much we've learned and how much access to information and think for women as we progress, you know, even from back in the 2000s to now, there's just been so much more education and understanding that we don't have to live in the male gaze kind of situation. And so back then when I watched the movie, I saw no problems with the way that Noah approached Allie. But now I did cringe at it because now the knowledge base is a little bit more to say, mm -hmm. this is disrespectful. Like you don't really, you don't know me and you're this aggressive with me. It's, 
it's a little scary. Like Mm -hmm. you seem a little like you need some mental help. You're on it. Like the people she was with weren't even really protecting her. Like they're like, Oh, that's just Noah. Like, no, like tell him to get the fuck out. Like she said, no, she means no respect her words. You know, and they pushed for it. Go out with yeah. him. Yeah. Go out with him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So he does get his date because he hangs from the Ferris wheel at the top, and then like let's go with one hand. And so finally, she's just like afraid that he's gonna fall, so she agrees to go on a date with him. At least she cares. I would himself. I would have been like, go ahead and jump. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been. But she kind of lies to him because later on we see them meet up again and and he's like, I'm ready for that day. And she was like, you can kick rocks for all I care. And it's not till their friends again at the movie theater push them into a date situation that she didn't ask for. So yet again, yep. her rights are being violated. Poor Allie. <laughs> So, yes, they do go to the movies. He just sits and stares at her the whole movie, question mark. <laughs> yeah. And Every I don't... time she looks over, he's staring at her. <laughs> but let's be real, okay? Do you ever... Do you ever find men who literally don't care about rejection, like they laugh in the face of rejection, more attractive? No. Because Noah they're... gives... I get BDE from Noah. I'm sorry. I do. Well, it's because it's Ryan Gosling. If a, re- if a man in real life, I'm going to tell you a story. One of my neighbors growing up, like I moved into this house. I moved right next door to Ken, actually, Jackie's husband. And when I got there, there's a bunch of kids in the neighborhood. And there was this kid, the moment he saw me, that was it for him. And the insanity that came he did not listen to me saying, I am not interested. He thought putting a dead frog in my mailbox was like Courtship. something endearing. Yes. <laughs> yes. We went to the same high school. He was a little bit younger than me. We had a fire drill. I was with the guy I liked. He came up and tried to carry me out of the building. Like things that <laughs> you would see in the movies he was trying to do. And I, after a while, I had to like really cuss him out so that he can like get in his head that I was not interested. And I was starting to get scared because it was just so much. He told me when he saw me, I walked in slow motion. That's great for you. But not if he had looked like Ryan Gosling. Okay. Touche. That's fair. <laughs> Maybe. That's fair. Because <laughs> you have to have some sort of attraction to that person for them to be able to get away with behavior like that. Yeah. So after the movies, their friends are driving home and he's like, no, let's walk home. And she agrees. I don't know what makes her agree. Right. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure. They, it's not like they had this like huge spark during the movie. No. Hmm. Maybe she just was like, I give in or whatever. But I really did feel bad for Rachel McAdams in the scene because I always say, like, if you can see the 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 air, like the I don't know what you call it. Yeah, their breath it was if so you see the, that you could see their breath. Uh, and so like here is Ryan Gosling with like a flannel jacket and like pants and he's warm and Allie has this like little cardigan and a thin ass dress and I'm like <laughs> this is so not fair that she's having to endure this cold I ass air. That. yeah that's a good observation <laughs> her dresses were like you said Jackie like her outfits were on point gorgeous yeah there she looked pl- great the entire movie there is a plum dress that she wears at one point, like when she starts date James Marsden, that is just like the the most beautiful gown I've ever mm. seen. I was like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> I think my favorite scene, looks wise, was when they got engaged. Oh, she looked like mm-hmm. with the white dress and the red lip. I mean, she oh, looked flawless. That white yeah. dress, she looked was so good. Amazing. She. Mm-hmm. She looked gorgeous. After watching the movie, I went to go look up who actually was the costume designer. And her name is Karen Wagner. 
I, she just did an amazing job because she has so many outfits in this movie and she looked flawless. There's this red hat she wears when she goes to see Mm -hmm. Jason Merson's character. And yes. And even Kim was like, look at that hat. (laughs) It was so she did the costumes for the green mile, the TV show underground and the movie Alice is among other things, but she did an amazing job on this movie. So great. So they, they get to talking, the streets are deserted. So they're kind of just walking through the middle of town, get to talking, He's asking her, like, what do you do for fun? And she really doesn't have a good answer. She eventually comes up on, I like to paint, but essentially, like, I don't get to paint that much, but I do like it when I do it. And she's rattling off all of the things she has to do, like her little, like, finishing school and studies and all this stuff. And he's like, like, it doesn't seem like you even have any free time doesn't seem like you're free at all. And she's like, I am free. So then (laughs) he plays this game of chicken behind me. There we go. Where he lays down in the middle of a crosswalk. And he's like, come lay next to me. So to Danielle's point, now she's in thin clothing, (laughs) laying on cold ass concrete, asphalt. Question. Let's say you're on the best day ever. Are you laying on the street? Yes. I can't do it. I I want to show the that best I'm, date ever. Like, I want to sh- yes. show I'm the cool girl and I can, no, I, I'm just, you're not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not laying my body on the dirty floor. That's my limit. I have no problem with that. That's why I probably why I'm still single. <laughs> probably why I've been in a lot of, I don't know. <laughs> my track record is not that great either. So I don't really know what to say, but I would do it. He does tell her, you don't do what you want to do. You do what everyone else wants you to do. And you need to learn how to trust other people. So then they're laying in the middle of the street and then eventually a car comes up and vroom vrooms up on them <laughs> and they hop up and run to the sidewalk and she's hysterically laughing. And she's like, that was so much fun. So now... I think I think that's another thing. So one of the things that Noah sees about her is that, and I think this happens for a lot of people because you get wrapped up in your parents' expectations or, you know, if you, especially if you have a tight leash, I think he notices that she is a full on free spirit and somebody is literally trying to like smash out the life out of her. And I think he just noticed that light about her that, I don't even think she recognizes that someone was trying to like manage her, you know, contain it. And he, all he ever wants for her, even if she's not with him is for her to be able to be that person. He sees, he sees Allie, like who she is, even when she can't see it, which I thought was really sweet and nice. That's interesting. I don't think I read into that part that much. It kind of was like, I took it for like face value. It was like, she's like, Oh, I have, you know, this class and this thing. And I play piano and I do this. And he's like, okay, you don't sound like passionate about any of those that just sound like a to-do list. Right. So is that what you like to do (laughs) or, you know, like she just didn't sound convincing. Yeah. And I think that's why he tries to push her to like do some fun stuff. But that moment where she kind of breaks and mm-hmm. you see her laugh like that, mm-hmm. that's the real alley. That mm-hmm. is who he already saw before. And he, he, it's like, he's like, yes, I knew she was in there. Yeah. Isn't that just, what we all want though? Yeah. To just like, you know, yeah, he just almost See had to us. run over to. <laughs> I think it's romantic. I love it. <laughs> run so, me over, um... daddy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new shirt. That's a run new shirt. Over, I'll daddy. wear it on a hoodie. <laughs> Send me that. Have them playing on the floor. Because, yeah, this image <laughs> with "Run me over, daddy." <laughs> I'm buying it. <laughs> So in this scene still, after they almost get run over, he does ask her to dance with him again. They dance in the street. He's humming (laughs) a real out of tune 
<laughs> tune. So is this his go-to move? Like, because one of the first things he asked her is like, will you dance with me? Like, real aggressive. Was it you or Ken when we were watching this that were like, he won't have any moves left after this? Yeah. I think it was, was it you? I mean, yeah, in this scene, because I'm like, we've already gone for a walk. Asked her what her hobbies were, what she liked to do for her. Laid in the street, dancing in the street. I'm like, there's nothing left. Like, your bag of tricks is going to be empty. <laughs> and I was like, he's Ryan Gosling. His <laughs> bag is endless. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so now they are inseparable. She goes over to his house. Yeah, we see like a prank. We see a montage yeah. of them. that's just like making out everywhere, jumping on each other. You know, kids in love, kids in love. Yeah. And it is important to note that she goes to his town, Seabrook. Is that the name of the town? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is where they have their summer home. So her family only comes during the summer and then they go back home. I think I know. Charleston. So when she goes to their house, Noah is sitting on the porch with his dad, Frank, and he's reading his dad poetry. Well, Walt. Whitman. And his dad tells her, like, he's done this ever since he was little. He had a, a stutter. And so this is kind of how he was able to practice speaking without stuttering. She brings them a painting because she has now started painting again on I was encouragement. Hmm. And then the dad's like, let's go have breakfast. It's you know like, what? it's late o'clock. And he's like, it's never a bad time for breakfast. It really isn't. I love me some Great. IHOP at any time in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then we see more of them just spending time together there at the, the beach. She really wants to be a bird for some reason. Let me just say, I do, despite Jackie's very hard opinions, I have to give her props because she is deathly afraid of birds. And this movie is full of them. Two Everywhere. Birds. <laughs> actually i feel like did you have a bad three. experience with birds no i i just i i i can't stand them like Which i is... am terrified of them i don't <laughs> of want... all bird species penguins are okay from a distance i don't want to touch one <laughs> like little puffins like a puffin i feel like falls into like the penguin and then i do appreciate owls but <laughs> any other bird no, thank you. But she's fine if they're not like real in front of her because we played a board game last night. It was mm -hmm. my first time. What was it called? Wingspan. It's, I'm, I'm going to be honest, it's a nerd game for sure. It Sounds like of, it. Uh, yeah, a lot of, it's some National Geographic shit, but it was very, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it was very calming. It was fun. There's some strategy. I almost won. I lost by one point. How but do you yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah. is it like just National Geographic facts? There's facts yeah. on the birds, but like, it's not like that. It's just oh, it's like all whole... birds. That's why it's called wingspan. It's all yeah. birds. Yeah. 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 So essentially you just collect birds and then you like hatch them on your board and they get you points and stuff like that. Just hearing it said out loud. I, I know. <laughs> Sounds like a real Sounds... hoose. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. It's even more fun to play with my sister who is obsessed with animals and she makes you read because each card has like the wingspan on it and like where they live and a fun fact. And you have to read all of that as you play your birds. So it takes exponentially longer to play. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey friends, I'm Emma. Hey, I'm Haley. And we are the hosts of the Now and Then podcast. We are a couple of millennial BFFs who are taking trips down memory lane, revisiting all of our favorite movies from our childhoods growing up in the 90s and early 2000s. We're trash and we also trash these films <laughs> unless they hold up. Every week we review a different film favorite of ours or yours and give it a full breakdown and review then we rate them were they good were they nostalgic do they hold up at all we're gonna break it down for you as we recap and roast these movies a full slow roast and we want you to join us check us out you can find now and then podcasts wherever you listen to podcasts and you can also follow us on instagram and tiktok at now and then pod we hope to see you there. Bye. Bye.
So this is where you see that she is a free spirit. It's just them alone on the beach. She's talking about how she she wants to be a bird, and he's like, well, if you are a bird, then I'm a bird too. He's just like, I'm down for the ride. Wherever you go, boo, any lifetime, I'm with you. That's That's pretty much it. And, you know, I mean, I don't know what other people's beliefs are, but I do believe, like, I think it's a possibility we can have, we have reincarnation. I do believe in it, and I, I do think that, like, people you've known for from other lifetimes, like, I think that's why you have those, like, instant... I'm in love with you. I feel like maybe there's a connection from a previous time or whatever. And I do, I just, I don't know. I could see Allie and Noah being little soulmates. Then they're at the lake with their friends. She's scared to swing on the rope swing. (laughs) Get in the water. (laughs) (laughs) When all those celebrities were coming about, out about not bathing i use that clip for instagram and i put like over alley all the celebrities not bathing and the rest of us telling them to get their ass in the water oh the the bathing suit in the beach scene both bathing suits are so cute but the beach spe- scene in particular because she has the head wrap with it yeah it's like red mm. and white polka dot so cute I just feel like those bathing suits were so much more forgiving than the nonsense we have now. I want to go back to a a bathing suit. You know what I mean? <sighs> I I dress head to toe in oh, Jackie. <laughs> I, I have bathing capris because I burn easily. Yeah, so... Jackie can't do the sun. So we were a perfect pair when we met in high school. So imagine this: we're both. In Florida, and we're like, I don't like the beach. She's like, me either. Perfect. We would go, and we would have all the things to like prevent us having to really be in the sun. And I don't like. I'm with you guys. Yeah, the beach is overrated. Don't get me started on sand. No, <laughs> that's it. That was it. So it's a combination of the fact that my mom made me watch Jaws as a young child, <laughs> and that she said when I was little, like. She'd put me in the sand and I was like, nah, homie, I don't know what this shit is, but I don't like it. You want no parts of that. <laughs> I I don't like salt water, like when it dries on your skin and yeah. she, like, I don't want any part of it. And it was funny because Danielle and I were in this friend group and they would always be like, let's go to the beach at night and stuff. And Danielle and I are like, we're going to play GameCube. We'll be <laughs> yeah, like, we're not doing that. Thanks. No. And then the beach at night, it's fun. If it's like, you know, you go and you're like dressed and you have sneakers on and you're not trying to Sunday and be in the water and in the sand. And, and it was also like an or- ordeal because like my hair, you know, my per like, First of all, getting sand in my hair and knowing that, like, my hair routine, like, I had to know that my hair was about to be washed to go ahead and do these, you know, this nonsensical thing you call the beach life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like the fact, dare I say, I didn't like the fact that, you know, I didn't like going to the beach with my Caucasian friends because they always look cute coming out of the water. And I look a damn mess. (laughs) Frizzy hair. Your hair was beautiful. It's just that the damn beauty standards didn't teach us that. You had beautiful (laughs) curls, Christina. Thank you. You're welcome. I still would have liked just, you know. (laughs) Because to me, honestly, every person that comes out of the water looks like a fucking wet dog. Nobody looks beautiful (laughs) coming out of that. I was going to say my hair, like... Half of it is plastered to my face. <laughs> I got one eye open because the salt water is running in it. Not cute. So we also see Noah teaching Allie how to drive a car. She's not very good. Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, one thing I do say, Noah doesn't. He, he claims he has patience, but he be yelling at her a lot. And he was yeah. he was quite upset with this in this scene too. I mean, 
as someone who learned how to drive a manual transmission car from a significant other, that mm. scene was pretty real. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a recipe for disaster, honestly. Yeah. So now he, there is some more voiceover. He says, we didn't agree on much and we challenged each other, but we we're also crazy about each other. Is this the next scene when they go to her parents' house for dinner? No, this is, oh, this is just prior to that scene. This is when he's dropping her off and it's late. So daddy says, bring him for dinner on, or bring him, is it for dinner on yeah, Sunday? Yeah, yeah. It's during the day. Yeah. Well, you know, some people eat early for dinner. That's true, especially on Sunday after church. Yeah. So he goes and has lunch with her family and their hoity-toity friends. And one person has the audacity to ask so him rude. how he how much money he makes at the lumber yard. So rude. These people are atrocious. I am going to take this time to say when I first watched this movie, I didn't fully grasp everything about it. When I watched it this time, I definitely pointed out the things that are glaringly there. So I understand that this movie is a Southern white drama. And, but the thing about this movie, it's not like they just had white people in it. They did a thing where there are a ton of black people in this movie as props. They're not even like real. There's a lot of caricatures. There's some mammy caricatures in some of these characters mm -hmm. all the way into when they're at the nursing home in present day. Yep. And the black characters are just in the background, mm -hmm. which obviously it, it tells a lot. It tells how these types of people did feel about black people in general. They're the help. They're the help, quote, quote, unquote. But they do show the dichotomy between how Ali's family treats Black people and how Noah and his dad treats Black people. Because Noah and his dad are not just having Black people around serving them. They are in community with them. They're playing music with them. Now, you don't get a bunch of people with actual speaking roles. There is no real Black character I will say mm -hmm. that, but you can see the difference. And it's a, it, it is a true telling of people in, in this area, in the South. And I did point out to Jackie and Ken in one of the scenes, you can see Allie clearly lives on a plantation or maybe, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. And the house that Noah builds up is a plantation, but on Allie's property, you can clearly see the plantation houses outside mm -hmm of the gate mm. you can see them all lined up which it still blows my mind like from a historical standpoint i understand it still exists but like it it just just to just see it in this movie yeah. it just like no problem it, it did cause some discourse in my heart really though because i, I just feel like it's true to the time like it didn't it's it true didn't... to the time but this movie just like this is one of the reasons like a movie like this is one of the reasons why we even to this day, like we have Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively getting married on the plantation. Why these people still have these mm. fantasies of living on the plantation. So it's just like, you're taking what you want from the historical sense of it. Yes, it's beautiful, but to know the bloodshed, the, the horrific things like I, I, could not feel comfortable just parading around there knowing mm. the atrocities that happened. I get that. Yeah. yeah. So they have the weird so, dinner with yes, the family. Um, the mom is like, the mom is very devious in the way she handles this situation. She does not want mm. Allie dating Noah, but she doesn't say it flat out. She doesn't try at first to be like, you can't see him anymore. And the dad is very much like, it's summer love. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And she's like, it's not fine. So then she mentions that Ali is, has been accepted to Sarah Lawrence in New York. And he's kind of like, uh, like, I want what's best for you. So if, if Sarah Lawrence is what's best for you, then that's what 
you should do. Like he's not phased by this, the mom saying this at this yeah. time. So, but you know, like the mom is plotting yeah. behind the scenes. I just feel like no one can play an uppity rich woman or even give competition as an uppity rich woman like Joan Allen can. Yeah. Mm. That she stay in that rich uppity bag in her career. hundred percent. I love that about her. She, she plays it well. She does. I mean, that role was meant for her. I believe her. (laughs) (laughs) And after, I mean, like after this, this is when Noah, when Allie comes to her, his house and obviously their making out has progressed more. Like they're at a point where, okay, we can't just keep making out anymore kind of thing. And so Noah's like, let me take you somewhere. And I said this when we were watching it, but it reminded me of the movie Teen Witch. I was like, so is this a thing where we take the girls that we like to really messed up murder houses <laughs> to try that to like get it on? It is a second location. It is a second location. And this is where Noah takes Allie to the plantation house. Now, what I do like is that Noah had it in his mind. He's always been in love with this house. Mm-hmm before he even met Ali. So it was always something that he wanted to do was to, to get enough money to buy it and fix it up. But now Ali has inserted herself to say, I'm a part of this dream. This is going to be my house too. And <laughs> you know, I like it. Yes. Yeah, so he's kind of explaining his ideas for the house. Ali says it needs to be painted white with blue shutters and, and then a, discusses a porch that wraps around the hole yes so that she can drink tea and look at the water yes so um, they're just going back and forth <laughs> she notices an old piano so she sits down starts playing the piano there's more making out and then she's like make love to me noah <laughs> It's very paint me like your French model, Jack. <laughs> I did think a lot about Titanic when I was watching this movie. Really? Yeah, I just feel like the storyline is, you know, you got the rich girl, you get the poor guy, they fall in love, they shouldn't, you know. It was it's like same storyline. Same See, character, different gotten- fonts. If yeah. I had gotten Rose's spunky spirit in Allie, then I w- maybe would have liked this movie better. But wait, okay, so time out. What about Rose? I mean, she was a little bit more, yeah, okay, I get spunky. She, she was, was elitist. <laughs> she was elitist. She, I mean, in the beginning, she was very rude to Jack, but eventually she does. I do think so was her. So was Allie. Yeah, you you do get to see, I think, more of Rose's character personality. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Like she went and got that axe for her man. She was like doing things. She was helping people on the ship, like as much as she could. She was spitting in Billy Zane's face. Like she was doing things. Yeah, she was paint me like you're French women. (laughs) She didn't want the necklace. Like she. Allie was giving privileged white girl the whole movie and then yeah. giving, I mean, she's rich, giving kept rich, queen yeah. is what I got. <laughs> and then a lot of rich white woman tears when he was like, bitch, what the fuck do you want? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> is the most awkward undressing scene maybe of all time? Question mark. Oh, <laughs> So Mm. he lays a blanket on the floor. They stand on opposite sides of the blanket. And it's like, hey, I'm going to take my pants off. Okay, (laughs) I'm going to take my bra off. Like, they just take turns taking articles of clothing off until they're both (laughs) naked, just staring at one another. But they were teenagers. They never did that before. But, like, why so far? Why not come to the middle of the blanket and just undress each other? Or it was, like, fucking show and tell. Is this a health class? What's happening (laughs) You tell me what y'all first time was like. How about we talk about that? I was on a twin bed. No, let me sum up. It wasn't, like, come on. You don't stand across from each other and just... It was just a I little think awkward. He had to. It's a little drama. You know, they're trying to like reinforce the fact that they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. I, and 
I don't believe for a second that Noah didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, no one, no, no one knew what he was doing. I just felt like this was a chance for him to be a little sexy. I think if he had like slowly taken her clothes off, kissed her here and there, it would have made her less giggly and in her head. She had so much time to think because of this <laughs> health class. All right, or the doctor's coming in in a minute, ma'am. I need you to derobe, and he'll be here in a second. That was the vibes they were giving. Well, especially because it started out very sexy. Like he right. came up behind her while she was playing the piano, started kissing her neck, spun her around. Like all that was hot, and then you get like this weird like. <laughs> I don't what? know what I'm doing. And it's not even like fun strip poker way either. No. Like, yeah. you know, it's just like, but let's not forget they're supposed to be 17 here. So is that, would that I've be like weird if it was like <laughs> the hottest sex scene you've ever seen? And I, they're like minors. It's, it's a movie. I mean, I get that. I'm just, I'm just give playing me something. <laughs> don't give me something. I'd like to see a little something from Ryan too. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> apparently there was a longer i don't i don't know if it was this sex scene or when they were i think it's a second later. i think it's a second sex scene there was a longer cut that ended up being cut for the theatrical release because they wanted it to remain pg-13 mm. question do they actually do the deed i got very confused in this this scene not the first time okay not the first time because, oh, because she does say that's, yes, that's what I've been missing, missing all the time. What I've been okay. missing. Yeah. yeah. But I, I feel did... like it was just a tip. Because like, <laughs> like we were uh, close. Not just a tip could be you. <laughs> <laughs> I I did relate with Allie because I, I, I know at that time in my life when I was younger, I was so nervous and immature like her asking a bunch of questions and like what are you mm -hmm. thinking and all that stuff i i may have done some of those things allegedly allegedly at least i just froze up <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know what to do <laughs> so they're trying to get it in literally and then Finn comes running in saying, yo, it's like two o'clock in the morning. Allie's parents are looking for you. They have Popo looking for you. Y'all in trouble. So they like quickly hurry up and head out to get back to Allie's house. And this is when Allie's mom is just like giving Allie the business. This is the first time you kind of see the dad be a little stern because Noah's like, this is not her fault. And he's just like, have a seat, you know? And the mom's like, he's trash. He's trash. And I was like, wow, this is fucked up. Like the man could hear you. And after a while, Noah's like, I'm not going to sit here and listen to these people talk shit about me. Allie pretty much tells her mom to go fuck herself and that she's in love with Noah. They're going to be together. And that... You know, what the fuck do you guys know? You married adults. You don't know nothing about mm. love. You don't even laugh. You don't touch. You don't do anything. And she's like, but really? that was kind of real, though. Yeah, it was. She really called out her parents. I was like, God yeah. damn. God damn, Allie. And then Noah has left at this point. He's taken his dignity out the door. And she, like, runs up to him and is trying to, like, say, fuck him. We'll be together. And he's, like, he's just putting things together. Like, this is really hard. She's going to be going to New York to go to college. Her pay they're, Like, there's too many hurdles. And I think his, his pride and his feelings are hurt, but also I think he's trying to do what's best for Allie because I think he just thinks she deserves the world and he doesn't think that he measures up, you know? And, but they fight all the fucking time. So he thinks, you know, they both leave this situation thinking that it's a fight. She does break up with him. She like, they're both firecrackers. I don't know what their zodiac when I signs tell you, are. I think that was the scene I related to the most. Yeah. When she's like pushing him, hitting him, fighting with him. And then she's like, you know, just leave or whatever it is that she says. And then she's like, where are you going? Don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> I was like, like uh, we're not I really broken that. up. We're not broken that. up. <laughs> like, you just said we're breaking up then. Like, it was a lot. 
I I was like, I can't relate to these people are nuts, but all right. But I, I, I like that they were evenly nuts together. So one thing that I thought when I was watching this back from an adult perspective was like how Allie was like, well, you don't even know, like I know about love, right? Like you don't look at, just like you were saying, you don't look at daddy the way that I look at Noah. Right. And I was like, you know, when we're that age, we're often told that we don't know what love is, Mm -hmm. Yeah. but I feel like it's the opposite because I feel like my earlier relationships were truly unconditional. Yeah. Now they weren't always practical, right? No. Like if I were to be an adult with those people, my adult life would look very, very different, but from like a true unconditional love standpoint, it's it was pure. so, oh, it was so pure. And I feel like now, you know, in looking for a partner, I'm looking with a different set of eyes. It's like, okay, you make a good, are you going to make a good, not only a good husband, but a good life partner, you're responsible. Yeah. It's, it's like way more practical qualities versus this just like uninhibited, yeah, unconditional. Well, also love. you had... Like, if you think about where you started from where you are now, you, you had less fear, right? First of all, your first love, you never had your heart broken. So you don't know that you need to maybe tread lightly. You don't have that. You're just literally jumping off a cliff and you don't think about anything. Mm -hmm. And it does feel, it does resonate with you so much more because it's, unfiltered yeah at the moment your heart breaks and that heartbreak is the one that sits with you forever because lord jesus yeah but yeah you're right i i agree like and we see that with ali's mom later on when she kind of finally gives insight to ali like this i i I know what you went through because this is the same situation that happened to me and I made a practical choice. And we also do have to take a step back and look at the time frame. You know, women have way more freedom financially now than we did ever. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you did have to choose your partner very carefully because you did not have the capabilities to like, go out there and get a job and make a living for yourself or do, you know, buy a house by yourself, have a credit card, all that stuff. Yeah, that's Um, true. Allie was very lucky that she was even able to go to college at that point in time, you know? So Mm -hmm. I didn't really think about it that way. Like it really did change the trajectory of your life depending on which decision. Yeah. Like which way you went. And I, I think when I first watched this movie, I thought Allie's mom was the villain a hundred percent. And then mm-hmm. while rewatching it this time around, I kind of had more of a softness for her because she, did she go about everything in the right way? No, but mm-hmm. she really was trying to protect Allie. It wasn't about just like, I want you to do this for me, but she was thinking long run, what's going to be the best for Allie so that she can have some security. Mm -hmm. I know this is jumping ahead just a little bit, but since we're talking about her mom, do you think, because in watching it back, I was like kind of confused as to which way she would have gone if she could have done it over again. But do you think that she thought she made the wrong decision? Like to me, it wasn't super clear. I think that she was just like, you know, I, this is, is I think she has regrets. Like, I think she, just like we were just talking about your first love, like that love, you could tell that she, it pains her, but Jackie, (laughs) you all watching, what did you say? I didn't say Ken did it. It did. Oh, okay. Ken goes, she's lying to her. She's taking it. The mom is taking her to the lumber yard, pointing out some dude and making up the story (laughs) to gain favor. What? So, so yeah, she. So we're watching this, and he's like, "I was like, that's Dan Scott from Did he Tree really Hill." Think that or was he kidding? Was he no, just like, like he was 100%. like, really? Yeah, yeah. It had me questioning. I'm like, oh my god, did she just fake it? But no, when, because they looked at each other. They had that yeah. moment. I yeah. think he was just. I mean, like, if you watch, <laughs> watch it from that lens, it's very easy to be like. Oh, he kind of just looks over at two women in a car. Like, <laughs> like it could very well possibly be. Hmm. Interesting. Like, and then Ken was like, her mom is gaslighting her. 
<laughs> to make the right decision in her mom's opinion. I like have... the guy didn't end up to be much anyway. Right. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, I would have agreed, but I, I'm st like, your question makes me rethink things because the fact that she gives Allie the letters, she should, she didn't have to do that at all. Like she came and brought the letters and said, I just want you to be happy and I hope you make the right decision. Mm -hmm. She does tell her like both sides. She's, she, you know, she's like, I stop here. I look at this man. He was, mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't be with him. And, and look, your father, I have a good life. I love your father, but I think she did tell the truth. Like, you know, but my heart clearly is with that man throwing the lumber over there. Dan Scott yeah. from One Tree Hill is my boo thing. <laughs> I thought it left a lot for interpretation because the way, just the way the conversation went, she's like crying about this guy. And then she's like, but I just, I love your father so much. You know that I do. I love your father. And then it kind of like left it there. I would have liked yeah. them to like tighten that up just for my own personal, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't like the leave up for interpretation kind of, you know, just tell me what it, <laughs> it is. What's it supposed to be? But I so think that one, I was like, I'm not quite sure if she would have done the same thing over again. But I think it could also be looked at. Here I go with the conspiracy theories. <laughs> so, like the the mom. I love a good conspiracy theory, though. So give it to me. The mom knew that, like, she didn't want to damage her relationship with Allie any further. So she, one could argue that she went and told this story about this man just so to get Allie to sympathize with her. And, but she knew she had to come, like, obviously she had to come clean about the letters because no one told her about them and stuff. Right. And, and the mom wanted to be like, I'm going to leave the decision up to you, but was hoping that story kind of pushed her in the right direction. Yeah. And, and that goes back to my question of like, I don't know what, cause Allie's mom was like, I hope you make the right decision. Mm -hmm. But I'm not clear on what decision her mom thought was right. I like, think once her, okay, she might have thought Noah was nothing, but I think once she saw that house and that mm -hmm. he built it and that like he actually pulled himself out from poverty, essentially, she might have been like, okay, I think her giving the letters might have been like, I'm going to be fine with whatever you, you decide, which I think mm -hmm. is a win either way. Any decision that Allie made is the right decision, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Her mom made decisions based on fear and Allie did not in the end. Her mom wanted the security and Allie took a leap of faith. And I think that's awesome. Oh, they also say, I love you in that scene where they're, Right. That was the lubricant needed to slide the tip all the way in, but we didn't get exactly. there. So uh, they're broken up. For me. They're broken up. <laughs> Noah leaves. And then yes. the next morning we see Allie wake up and they are packing their shit. Mama ain't playing. They are leaving a week early. Yeah. And so she rides as fast as she can her little bike to the lumber yard and she's like where is noah i need to talk to him and finn's like no like it's over like i was up all night with go him. yeah like just let it go and she's like just please 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 tell him i love him and finn's like if he wants to get in contact you he will write i think finn is more of a realist. Like, obviously he's seen this happen before people from out of town come to their summer homes. He knows what's up. Like he's probably sliding through ladies every summer. He's got a new thing and he doesn't think it's a big deal, but like, I think, I don't think he realized how much Noah and Allie, this wasn't just like a summer fling for them. And he's trying to protect his bro. I was going to say, know? it just seems like, because as soon as Noah found out that Allie was there, he hopped right into his truck <laughs> and went right over to her house. He, so. he did. <laughs> yeah. I, I do have to, I did talk smack about Kevin Conley the whole damn movie because why I just some about him. I don't understand. There's, I don't find him to be, I am like, how does he keep getting these roles? I don't know if it's like, who does he know besides Leonardo DiCaprio? 
he is in the pussy posse with Leonardo DiCaprio. He's one of his bros, but I just was like, we could have gotten someone else in this role. I, I don't. I, I, I I was fine with him as the friend. Yeah, like it would have been a whole another thing if he was like the Noah of the situation. Oh, God, like, no. <laughs> what, in what world? Yeah, I'm just being a hater, and I may regret this later if we ever get Kevin Conley to be on the show. My bad. My bad. <laughs> So, so Noah tries to catch Allie. Yeah, Noah tries to catch Allie. He hits the gate, which was a mistake. He wasn't supposed to hit the gate, and he like fucked it up. And like they could, they're like Allie, we got the shot, and it's a good thing because you fucked up the gate. I is it with we, this truck? Yes. When we were watching it, we we're like, what the fuck? Like, oh, I missed was that. He, he, we're like, he was. I know when Allie to... ran into the gate when she came back. And she ran into his gate it, after it was like she visited the house, but I don't. It, yeah. It's like they had a big rod or iron gate around the oh. summer house, and that's what he hit oh. on accident. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I love hearing about those. <laughs> and then we see kind of a montage of Noah writing to Allie. Mom checks the mail, gets the letter. We know it's not going to get to Allie. And there's more voiceover. He wrote one letter a day for a year. They all went unanswered. And after a year, he wrote a farewell letter to get on with his life. He and Finn moved to Atlanta. And then they are drafted into World War II. Ah, thumbs the brakes, man. <laughs> and we see them on the front lines of World War II. Finn gets shot and killed. So obviously Noah is dealing with a lot when he is discharged from the army and comes back home. Allie is in her third year of law school. Law school. I don't know where I made that up. I was just gonna I was say like, I didn't know that she was in law school. She, she was not. She was in husband school. No, she was yeah. Lawrence was in all girl school. So Yeah. So <laughs> Allie's in third year of college and volunteered to be a nurse's aide for the soldiers coming back from war. We meet this soldier that is completely head to toe in a cast. Like she's <laughs> helping him sit up and he's just like, let's go on a date. She's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if the math is right, they must have dated for at least four or five years before they were getting to the point where they're going to get married. Because when she sees Noah later, she says it's been seven years. Yeah. So oh. she was about to go into college. So if she meets this guy, her, third, her third year. Year. But how long was it before she started dating him? Because he was completely healed the next time she sees him. That's true. So maybe they only date for Another a year. Another year and a yeah. half. Yeah. Before they he started was fucked dating. up. <laughs> he was but he was up. fine. At that stand in that back door. Yes, he, he was. was. Fine. And they, you know, they had to make sure that they did a good job of casting James, uh, James Mars because you, to compete with Ryan Gosling. Oh, which, yeah. Which is interesting because the director said that he wanted to hire an unknown and someone who was not attractive. And that's why he hired Ryan Gosling. And I'm like, sir, do you have eyes? No, not for nothing, though. Ryan Gosling is attractive because of his, like, Swagger. yes, and all the energy that he gives in the movies that he's in. Because he, like, okay, let's take a look at this picture right behind you. I don't see a problem. <laughs> I mean, but that's because you know how he is. I was like, it's it's know. hard. It's hard. My, wouldn't be my type. It's hard for yeah. me because nine year old Danielle was in love with Ryan Gosling. Really? Because that's when I saw him was Mickey Mouse Club. I had to choose I, I, from all the Mickey Mouse Clubbers, and I was oh, like, see. I was that's following him. him that Back you, then. Didn't, you didn't go J.C. Chazé? Oh, no. I so oh, for sure was in love with J.C. <laughs> but, you know. He is not my favorite Ryan. I will say that. You like um, Reynolds better? I do. I have mm. always been a Reynolds since 15 on Nickelodeon. Like, 
Ryan Reynolds has been it for me. Well, see, I think Ryan Reynolds is more attractive if I'm just looking at side by side photos. Mm-hmm. But the characters and the roles that Ryan Reynolds plays is the same every time. The, to me, I think Ryan Gosling's roles are way more attractive. Like I really started liking him in Crazy Stupid Love. Yeah. He I mean, the BDE and that whole <laughs> like it gave what it was supposed to give and I loved it. But I'm not a huge fan of like Ryan Reynolds roles. I don't know. I like his humor. So like he can be serving up the same thing every time. (laughs) Jackie said she likes consistency. I do. (laughs) Give me a Deadpool every year for the rest of my life and I'll be a happy camper. (laughs) Even with fucked up face. And and Deadpool. Yeah, he does. Yeah. So... Let's see. So, yes, she is still in college. So it must have been the end of her senior year when she sees this handsome gentleman standing, Mm. leaning up against a car and asks her on a date. And it is James Marsden from the the hospital. And And this this is his first Nicholas Sparks movie out of two because he's also in the best of me and they too do a weird casting situation with the younger version of his character not looking a damn thing like him so this must be like a nicholas spark thing sparks thing and got a lot of hate from doing this movie as well sorry from doing notebook yeah yeah to this day he says people come up to him still mad that he pre- was preventing Allie and Noah from being together. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but he didn't. He let her decide. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. People are crazy. Crazy stupid love for Allie and Noah. And they ended up together. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't Anyways. know what to tell you. They're not right in the head. <laughs> so then we see L- Lon... And Allie dating. He comes from old Southern money. You see them, like, she she genuinely has a good time with him and has fallen in love with him. They're at a jazz club, and they get, they have this whole weird marriage discussion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I he, he acknowledges that Allie wants to rebel. Like, he mm-hmm. knows that Allie is constantly fighting with her parents, and he kind of plays about that. It's also to be noted that when you say he comes from old money, his family owns cotton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna yeah. leave that out there for everybody to make their own choices about that. Continue. So he he does propose in this scene. Mama is so excited. She's like happily dancing with daddy, which I don't even think she likes daddy much most of the time. So <laughs> she said she love him, Jackie. She said she love him. In the way that Allie keeps saying that she loves Lon. I think she really does love Lon. She doesn't I think, think she did that too. Noah she she doesn't think Noah's an option. And so I think I know, she starts like, to let it go. It, I would believe it more if she didn't say it so much. It was like she was trying to convince herself. Yeah, it's true. A lot of the time. So that, that makes sense, though. I think she was. Like, even when he proposed and it was like, you know, Noah's face popped in her head. Mm-hmm. It's like, it. yeah, I think she wanted to love Lon because he was like the perfect person on paper but her heart was just like no like it just wasn't connecting so i think she was trying to convince herself for sure wouldn't take me Um, much we do see (laughs) we do see noah arriving back from war to his childhood home dad has sold the house gives noah all of the money and has already set up the deal for noah to purchase the Windsor plantation, his dream well, home. Plus Noah had the, he was afforded GI. the option to use the GI bill that right. not every soldier had the opportunity to use. Right. Mm, American history. Y'all. And yeah. What was that? 
the GI bill was something that was offered to kind of make it a little bit easier to purchase homes for all of oh, the okay. vets that came back at essentially like, you know, money and different opportunities and not, gotcha. not everybody was able to get that. If you just, advantage of that. Yeah. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he took a look at the house and he only saw one thing, Allie, that was via voiceover. So Noah has to go into Charleston to get his final house plans approved. While he's on the bus, he sees Allie walking down the street. He jumps out of a moving vehicle to go <laughs> see her. And then he sees her. He is full on just staring into a restaurant as ali meets lawn for lunch and they're like kissing and stuff and it yeah it's uh, it's a yeah. knife to the gut yeah killer and so then he becomes a self-proclaimed man obsessed <laughs> because he th- keeps thinking if he restores the house ali we can come back to him he's not wrong I think it was a great plan. In the process of building the house, not the process, but like in the time frame of Noah rebuilding the house, his father passes away. And so now the house is all he has. Like he, he doesn't have anything else to kind of fill his days. And then I wrote, beardy because then he gets to be looking like behind danielle and then when it's finally done it's the white house with blue shutters just as ali had asked he has a photographer come and i guess he's written up in the paper because this is i'm assuming like a a historical house in the area that he's put a lot of hard work into restoring he puts it up for sale but then like scares off any person that attempts to buy it yeah. They make a mention that he was even feeling like he would burn it, which I think they added that in because Ryan Gosling said that he wanted to actually have Noah burn the house down. Interesting take. That is, because then where would... Right. <laughs> they did not... Where would bone? Yeah, like where <laughs> would it, the rest of the movie take place? But okay. I just said uh, (laughs) what he was feeling. Not really sure where it just where he's going with that. (laughs) Yeah, but he we were talking about like that he goes method in his movies, Ryan Gosling. So I think he just very much was feeling Noah's angst and Mm -hmm. whatnot. Mm And it, it, he was going mad, so I could see him burning it down. It just didn't seem very practical to where the movie was going. So yeah, thank God they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. So the next scene is Allie trying on her wedding dress. They show her the write-up of her engagement and upcoming wedding in the paper, how it's going to be the 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 talk of the town and everyone's going to be there. And she flips the newspaper over and it's the picture behind Danielle of Noah standing in front of the Windsor plantation. And she faints so hard. Ain't that some shit ladies. Every time your life is going well, (laughs) here comes that motherfucker that you were every single time. (laughs) Every time (laughs) it's guaranteed guaranteed it's the only way i know that my life is going the right trajectory the minute my inbox is flooded by ex-boyfriends i know i'm taking the lord's path (laughs) (laughs) i love the scene after this where she just has the article and like a glass of some sort of liquor and Mm. she's in the bathtub wearing her veil just (laughs) contemplating her life choices (laughs) That dress was beautiful, though. It was. Like, it was gorgeous. I do have to give it to old white money. They do have beautiful things. Mm. Uh, Mm -hmm. She shows up at Lon's work and proclaims, I don't paint anymore. And he's like, I'll buy you (laughs) paint. Is that what you want? Why are you here? I'll get you and that then color she... by numbers, no problemo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then she's like, I gotta go out of town. I gotta go to Seabrook and clear my head. And he's like, Are you okay? <laughs> like, 
are we okay? Like Lon knows something is not quite right. Right. But he trusts her. And so he's like, okay, if you need to go away for the weekend, go away for the weekend. Dumb move. He does ask, should I be worried? <laughs> yes. Yes, you should, Lon. <laughs> I would say that J- Jason Marsden is Mr. Lose Your Girl. <laughs> <laughs> He loses Allie in this movie. Uh, essentially, he he kept playing back and forth with Jean Grey in the X-Men movies. Enchanted, he loses. I mean, he gains a different girl, but he loses his girl. I'm trying to think. I feel like he's been multiple movies where he is not the girl, the one the girl picks. And I just, I don't understand it. I mean, he gets the girl in 27 dresses, so it's fine. Barely. <laughs> the way she mistreated him in that movie. But yes, you're right. I do really like that movie. I yeah. think he's like this perfect, like Prince Charming. I don't know. Like it, it's, it's so cliche for every girl to like want to choose him. So he's like such an easy, like person to put in the roles of like girls that are like, no, yeah. I'm going to go this way to he, the unassuming underdog. He feels relatable. Like he feels mm-hmm. He's beautiful. He's a beautiful man. And I think for a long time, he said it kind of hindered his career a little bit because it was almost as if he was too handsome in a lot of ways. But he comes off as such like an every man. Like, yeah, he's very unassuming in all of his roles. There isn't like a whole lot of arrogance or anything to him. And I think he had to do that on purpose because he was having so much pushback with you know, they keep trying to service up these ugly men anyways, so that people feel like relatable. Only men can feel relatable. So Allie shows up at the Windsor plantation. She hits the fence. <laughs> she has buyer's remorse, essentially. She shows up, she just starts babbling on like she Allie does. And he just stares at her like I think he's so like he's lost it so much. I don't even know if he knows she's real at this point. Yeah. I feel like that's maybe it, every, yeah, that's definitely how it seemed. It's almost like every day this happens to him, but it's never been real. Like cause she's a mirage at this point. Yeah, and he's just and like, he wasn't giving her anything, so she's like, okay, sorry, did I make a mistake? Like I can't read you. Do you want me to leave? So I think she reacted normally, appropriately. Yes. And then eventually he's like, do you just want to come inside? And she's like, oh, okay. Then we flash to the present and older Allie is like, it's a good story. I want to hear more type thing. The doctor needs to see Duke. He's had two heart attacks in the past 18 months. And so the doctor's checking him out. And the doctor's like, I don't know why you come here every day. Like it's a, she has a degenerative disease, like she's eventually not going to remember anything. And he's like, but sometimes she does. And then they hear her playing the piano. He's like, I forgot to turn the page for her. And he's like, oh, the doctor's like, oh, well, it sounds like she got it. And he's like, no, she's playing that from memory. So kind of calling the doctor on some of his negative attitudes towards doing this repetitiously to jog her memories. I just feel like they should have gotten way more respect than they did because clearly the house that is their nursing home is the house that he built so much. So yeah, it is the same. Wait a second. That's the house with the shutters. Yes, it is. It is the same house. As many times as I've seen that movie, I never caught on to that. I I was like, is that the, it was the first time I was like, oh, wow. But that the brick in the front of the house, I believe Noah, once he found out his wife had this disease, I believe that he turned the house into a nursing home facility so that Allie would ha- be in a place in that house. she could remember. Yeah. Right. He might have had a different house where the family actually lived after that because we don't know what age Allie was. Go ahead. 
because now that I'm thinking about it, because the same nurse that's that's taking care of them throughout the whole movie was the same ones that found them at the end, but they were in like a hospital. Yeah, he. Ma- I think he made it into a legit thing. There's other people there. He knew she needed care, but like. I don't know if he donated it or what, but that is the same house. Wow. The same I lake, never the birds, caught on to that. all of it. Wow. And I, I mean, I, I could, I did notice the, like the wide shot yeah. that they did of the house. Like every time they kind of like transitioned back and forth between past and present day, but I just never put those two together. Damn. That's a good one. So now we're back to young Ellie and Noah. They're talking about their lives. Ellie's telling him about Lou. We come to find out later. He obviously tells her about the widow that he's been banging. Are we ready to talk about it? That poor thing. Let's talk about Martha. (laughs) Every time I I liked Martha. I felt yeah. for Martha. Yeah, no, I don't got like Martha was very disrespected. Let's be honest. Aww. So we did talk about it when we were watching the movie that like I, I do feel for Martha. The disrespect mm-hmm. was out of control, but she is a widow, and I think. He, Hold on, time out, time out. Why did you feel like she was so disrespected? I think just the way Noah treated her wasn't great. Like if you can't be with the love of your life and you're going to let, he's like, I have nothing to give, then you should not be fucking around with someone. Like, but at the same time, like he's being honest about like, just because you're honest about being a jackass doesn't mean you're not a jackass. And he was not like the girl kept trying. Like she, didn't obviously she didn't accept that this was the situation that she was just a fly That's by her night. fault. Martha it, knew what she was getting. Partly, partly, but I think we could say that he could take some responsibility at the fact that in that state of mind, he should not be fucking around with someone's feelings. I think he can be held accountable that yes, he was honest, but he was still playing house with this woman. I don't know. To me, when I watched it, I just felt like they were trying to really drive home the point of like what I, one of the notes that I had made was like, a woman always knows when a man is not there, right? Like a man's heart is somewhere else. And I feel like that's what they were trying to show because they're laying in bed and she's like, I know, like, I can tell when you're not looking at me. She got it. And she was, she had moments of sadness. And I think a lot of us could relate to one thing I said, like with Ken and Jackie, I was saying to them, like Ken and I were talking and I was like, I guess this is depression love. She's obviously still grieving her husband being dead. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. he is like, Allie's not dead, but he's grieving the loss of his love. And so they connected on that. And this woman is literally trying to grasp at anything and anybody who's grieving knows that you're not always in the right mindset to do what's best for you. Yeah. So even though Allie left him, I just felt like maybe he could have been a little bit more empathetic to, to the fact that this is, you just came from the war. She is a widow of the war. Like she's not right in the head to be making decisions about, who she should and shouldn't be sleeping with. You know what I mean? Like, I think he was in a better place than she was. So it made me a little annoyed. And that's just my opinion. That's fine. I mean, yes, everyone makes decisions, but I think from a power standpoint, I think he had a little bit more than she did. And Oh, of course. When, when she comes over and Allie is in the house, cooking and invites her in like i've literally almost been living here for a year more than a year whatever and now you're inviting me over the fuck is happening no they didn't live together they didn't live together but she's always there it's just like i don't i thought he would go to her house i i I don't she's at his house i think i thought she was at his house i think she was at his house I thought she was at, they were at her house because the kitchen was right off the bedroom. 
to go back and forth, but she was at his house. Like clearly it was well, their routine. Up, when she yeah. shows up, he didn't invite her. So they probably go back and forth. But it just it's such a it's such a weird thing. Like that are, was a weird yeah, I agree. It was like, a weird thing. I mean it did snap I think her out. The thing that Martha needed to like, snap out of it, go, go to the next progression of her grieving process. Agreed. Yeah, I, I just feel like poor Martha, poor Martha, <laughs> and or what's the guy that gets jilted? What's his name again? Don Lon. Lon. Yeah. Why do you think from? from Ali's standpoint that she was so willing to let Martha come in and just be like, Oh, let's hang out for the day. Like she had just because gone back to Noah and just slept together. Privilege. Allie Did she- knows that that's her dick. <laughs> you can see Allie looking outside the window, kind of side eye in it, but she played it like a Southern belle would play it, which is to kill him with kindness kind of situation. Mm. But she know that her name is tattooed on that man's dick. <laughs> <laughs> There's no problems. So Honestly. let's let, that was let's, well played. <laughs> let's catch up to the scene. So after they chat for a while, Allie goes back to her hotel. Lon has been calling all night. She's like, "I'm fine. I'm back at the hotel." Noah does tell her, "Come back tomorrow. I have something I want to show you." And so she goes back the next day. They go out on the rowboat, and the scene that has given me more anxiety <laughs> than probably any other scene. <laughs> in recent past so he rows into like this little alcove and it's just nothing but birds <laughs> yes danielle it... said it was beautiful i, I thought so too <laughs> it, i mean i understand why you went like if i saw an alcove armadillos i would have <laughs> but it wouldn't be pants. as romantic either as but i i get where she's coming from like she doesn't like the birds the birds are a little scary for her so i get it there's there, so many there were so many <laughs> and so like one of the things we mentioned when we were watching the movie was like how the hell did they get these birds here like this is a lot of birds so apparently the director wanted the birds in the scene and the producers at new line were like, yeah, we're not getting them birds. It's going to be hard to <laughs> make that possible and for them to stay on the lake. So the director said, I got time today. So him and the production team <laughs> actually bought hatchlings and raised them beside the lake. So when it came time to film, they would feel comfortable at the lake and they would stay. Could you imagine? Oh, he did have time. He did. Time. <laughs> wow. I mean, it added to it. Like, yeah. do you think the scene would have been the same had they not had all them damn birds? I mean, I wouldn't have known what I was missing, but yeah, no, it, it added it added to it. It was beautiful. Just the trees, everything was gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, and then the thunder rolls. And then the torrential rain. <laughs> that was um, awful. Yeah. <laughs> Ken was like, yeah. was how awful. did they get the <laughs> rain to rain so hard? And was like, <laughs> it's a rain machine. And he goes, but that's a lot of water for a rain machine. Like, multiple yeah. rain machines? Like, his brain could not process. He couldn't process it. The but, amount uh, of rain in that scene. It was, um, it was bad. But between the rain and then the sudden laughter... I could have done without that, yes. with, without that whole part. That was yeah. like the only scene in the movie where I was like kind of uncomfortable. It was just like, I, I think cringe. the laughter was like them finally breaking because the two of them had been pretending from the day before, like they were fine, you know? And so the rain happening and him just like saying, oh fuck, was kind of them being Allie and Noah again, not these mm-hmm. like, pod people that they were pretending to be and the rain helped the you know them say well what the fuck like where have you been Allie's like nah man where were you and he's like i've been waiting bitch i've been (laughs) writing i wrote you every day god damn it i never quitted you bitch still not over (laughs) 
never over or whatever this i don't know the verbiage but yeah he's very passionate about bitch you mine your name's on my dick i love it (laughs) so yes they start making out on the dock that's the run and jump into his arm scene Yep. That gets everyone all fired up. And he's wearing a white shirt, just like Mr. Darcy in Pride and Prejudice, getting all wet. <laughs> it's it's my thing. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so my they, soft porn. <laughs> they go up to the bedroom. They bone. She realizes what she's been missing. So I have a question. Mm-hmm. Did she have sex with yes. Lon? Okay. But... Long How do you know? Like, I believe they had sex. I, I think. I mean, I do too, but. I just believe that it wasn't what, he wasn't throwing what Noah was throwing down. And uh, I believe her, her name is on Lon's dick as well, but it's just not the same. So now we're caught up. Martha arrives. They have a lovely meal, the three of them, apparently. And Martha does say some really sweet things to Noah and she she's like I know like this is who you've been waiting for type thing and yeah she sees the good qualities in Allie <laughs> she she says she's sen- sensational is but... what she describes <laughs> Allie is this a part okay there was a part where maybe it was Allie is wrapped up in that blanket and Danielle proclaims that blanket smells like sex. And <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, I don't know if it was her who's wrapped in it or if when he was, ra- he was wrapped in it. But like, I do want to go back to the love scene for a second because I, I said this on an earlier episode, one of our episodes where I, I said that in a lot of white movies, when they go to the sex scenes, they're like heaving and like, they can't breathe and it's not really the same in black movies when they have love scenes, but I very much appreciated that they slowed it down and really made it slow love making. And they weren't out of fucking breath trying to like nothing kills me more than you just sliding it in. No, you you didn't tweak (laughs) and turn a few things to get it revved up. Like I just feel the pain of that every time I watch a movie. So I like that Noah took his time and really did some foreplay. Maybe that's what it is. I appreciate a little foreplay. And I don't like certain sounds, so heavy breathing's not for me either. So A plus on the sex scenes. (laughs) (laughs) Just had to- We need to redo like you know like they have the movie poster and then like the ratings or critics reviews and danielle just like a plus on the sex scene <laughs> a plus on the foreplay Allie wakes up the next morning so she stays the night there are flowers on the pillow and then there's a note to follow the arrows and the arrows take her to a painting studio that he has built for her. Which we um, all said that this studio was there way before Allie even came to the house. Yeah. If that It's like Field of Dreams. Her. If you build it, they will come. That's what yeah. Noah did. A hundred percent. Yeah. She came a lot in this movie. <laughs> oh, I like that. And then she decides to take her art outside. And so she's literally just wrapped loosely in a blanket and just painting in the nude on her wraparound. Maybe this is where I said, you know, that blanket smells like sex. (laughs) (laughs) There is a knock on the door and it's mom. And she's still only in her blanket. Yeah. And mom's like, Lon's on the way. He's been calling the hotel all night. Couldn't get a hold of you. Like he knows and your dad slipped, let it slip about Noah, yeah. like what's going down in pound town. Yeah. Mm. So she's like, well, tell me about the letters mother. And so mom's like, I just thought it was best. And she's like, you let me cry myself to sleep for months, knowing that he was actually writing. And you let me think 
that he didn't care and didn't right. try to contact me. This is when they take a drive to the lumber yard. Maybe mom knew this random lumber man. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe she didn't. The scene we were talking about earlier with Dan yes. Scott from <laughs> One Tree Hill. And then she brings her back, leaves her at the house, gives her the letters, tells her mm -hmm. she hopes she makes the right choices. And at this point, Noah is back. And he's like, this is weird because, you know, the mom's there. He He's kind of figuring something's going down and this is when Allie's like look Lon is here and I you know I made a commitment to someone and I've got to go talk to him and but she doesn't make it clear that she's gonna stay like go break things off and stay with Noah she's like very confused all of a sudden she's been being dicked down for three days straight and now all of a sudden she's confused yeah. about what the dick will do that to you <laughs> <laughs> so yes they get in an argument Allie leaves to go back to lawn and oh right before Allie leaves while they're arguing it, it, Noah does kind of what Allie did in the beginning where he's just yelling all of this stuff to hurt her feelings like leave I hate you and he's like no I want you to stay and he says like, yeah, we argue a lot. You put me in my place because I'm an arrogant son of a bitch and you're a pain in the ass. And so it's like we we balance each other out, essentially. Picture your life for me. Is it with him? And then we get the line, what do you want? Which is improv by Ryan Gosling. So well done, sir. Yeah. I would have loved to know what that was supposed to be if yeah. that was improv. Yeah. Same. Good. And then she, kept, she just keeps saying, it's not that simple. I have to go. She's driving down the road with her eyes closed. Never <laughs> a great plan. And then she opens her eyes and she almost has a head-on collision with a truck. She pulls over to the side. And then we flash back to the present. There is a candlelight dinner set up for two for the older Duke and Allie, they're looking out the window. She's looking at the sunset and she's like, never, I've never seen something so beautiful. And he's looking at her and he says, neither do I. I did think that was a very sweet line. And then as he's telling more of the story, she actually remembers him for a couple of minutes. He says it's never lasted more than five minutes when your memory comes back, but it's the old alley, they they start dancing, but then her memory fades again, and then she's very scared, very panicked. The nurses have to come in and sedate her. He's very upset. And we also find out that she actually wrote the story of their love story and gave it to him as her memory was, supposed, uh, was starting to fade. And the note inside says, read this to me and I'll come back to you. I can't. <laughs> That's the part that gets me every time. Every time. And at the end of this movie, I looked at Jackie and I said, I hope I die first because I can't. Mm, same. <laughs> yeah. So then we flash back and she goes to talk to Lon. And Lon's like, really, I have three options. I can shoot him. I can the, kick the crap out of him or I can leave you. But none of those options get me you. And so he's like, you need to do what's going to make you happy. But we never really quite see her saying, I'm going to be with <laughs> Noah. But you do feel, you feel for him because like, you know that she's she going to be with Noah, but he loves her so much. Like he's not even angry with her. He just kind wishes of... it was him. Yeah. Yeah. And then we see Allie's bitch ass roll up to his to <laughs> Noah's house with luggage. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So you see them embrace, and then you see the older version. Allie has to be sedated, and Noah ends up having another cardiac incident. He has a heart attack, and he has to go to the hospital. One scene that we did miss was that at some point the kids hit their oh, grown yes. kids do come to mm. see them. And this is before we really quite know it's Noah and Allie. So she thinks, so she doesn't recognize her own children, which is so heart wrenching just seeing that. And so they, I think they have three children and two grandchildren. Mm -hmm. One of the children 
I think is actually named after I think yeah. Noah. Yeah. And the kids are just like, fuck mom, come home. <laughs> I know they don't mean it like that, but like, I think they just, they've lost one parent and I feel like they just want to have the other parent while they have him. Mm-hmm. And yeah, unfortunately it's just like, he's the way he says, like, I can't leave my gal is just ugh, mm-hmm. so beautiful. Ride or die to the fucking end, mm-hmm. man. Well, see, when I watched this back, oh, sorry, Jackie. When I watched this back, I thought it was actually really obvious that it was Noah and Allie. And I was questioning, like, are we supposed to know this early? Because it's like (laughs) glaring to me. It is. I think it's obvious, but I think they were trying to play a cat, a switcheroo on some people, Yeah, you know? So, yeah. Were you going to say Jack? Oh, I was just going to progress the story so that's fine (laughs) so yes Noah has a cardiac event he's in the hospital he gets back to the nursing home he's like sneaking out of his room very obviously trying to get to Allie's room because he misses her and the nurse is like you know I can't let you go see Miss Allie right now like it's and but but she's like but I'm going downstairs to get some coffee and I won't be back for a few minutes. And so she leaves. He notices she has a full cup of coffee on the desk. He sneaks in, he climbs in bed with her and Allie is lucid. And so she's like, I was afraid you would never come back. She asks if their love is strong enough to just like let them do anything to do anything or to let them go together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our love could do anything, the even a suicide pack. <laughs> but I mean, it's not unheard of that mm-hmm. couples dying back to back like that. I agree. It was just the whole. I know. Love Jen, like makes miracles. <laughs> it can take us away together. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. How could you not feel something? Did you feel anything? I was sad old people died. <laughs> <laughs> but that was it. Like, I didn't. You don't want you and Ken to just die together? Well, yeah, that's fine. I just, I don't think it's our love that's going to kill us at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> So he climbs in bed with her. They say goodnight. He says, I'll be seeing you. And then the nurse finds them together in the morning, and they have both passed away in the night. There's an investigation happening in that uh, (laughs) nursing home. They have two elderlies. She literally said that as the movie is ending, just killing the vibe. We're like, we were all crying i don't know if ken was crying but ken was i crying we were all crying Aww. i do think it's beautiful that the characters of noah and ali are actually based on real life people they're based I didn't know on that. nicholas sparks i think it is it his ex-wife's grandparents mm. and they were actually sick when they got married so they kind of reenacted their wedding or whatever for them which is super cute and then the closing scene is just a flock of birds at sunset (laughs) so it's Allie and Noah, I guess, became birds like she wanted oh yeah you're right oh I didn't even think about it that way I just thought it was just the birds again the notebook (laughs) (laughs) you did it I did I I wasn't that bad I could have been a, a lot worse (laughs) <laughs> yes, but we want people to continue to listen to this podcast. So, yeah. But also, you know, I can't be swayed. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. If I have an opinion, it's going to stay that I'm I'm not easily influenced by others. <laughs> yes, very hard headed is what she just said. Uh, <laughs> extremely. Ask my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie was mostly filmed in location in South Carolina and. The production offices were set up in Charleston on the naval base in North Charleston. Ryan Gosling temporarily moved to Charleston prior to filming. And during those two months, he rode the river and he made furniture, which you can tell by his physique when he is mm. older. Oh, so. no. Yeah. 
The one that I thought was interesting was that all of the scenes were filmed reversed. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because watching it, I was like, you know, they do look different. The younger versions do look different from the older versions. And I was wondering if there was some sort of like, you know, they could do. Yeah. Like where they made them look younger. I mean, obviously he doesn't have facial hair, but he lost 20 pounds, shaved his face. And then they filmed the scenes where they were younger. So that would explain why he does look significantly younger in the beginning scenes. But I thought that was interesting that they filmed them reverse. Yeah. Cause like, he looks so jacked. It's crazy to think that like, he looks so muscular and those are the scenes that they filmed first Mm -hmm. older Noah. And then like he had the fact that he had to lose all that muscle weight was just kind of insane. Cause yeah, I don't want to say it's giving captain America before he gets his juice kind of thing, but (laughs) there is a contrast between his physique in the beginning and in the end. Yeah. Vitas said that when Rachel McAdams came in and read, it was apparent that she was the one. She and Ryan had great chemistry between them. Mm-hmm. And then Rachel said, commented that she thought it would be a dream to be able to do it. She read the script and went into audition just two days later. It was a good way to do it because I was very full of the story. I like that in juxtaposition to the fact that she and Ryan Gosling did not get along during the filming of this movie. Yeah. And I know really? hate is very adjacent to love. Yeah. But yeah, they could not stand each other. They tried to get each other off of the film multiple uh, times multiple times yeah, they i was about to ask if they were actually dating off screen because yes. they have such good chemistry they dated after that. the movie but it was recent that the director came out and talked about that nobody knew that before and that they dated or that they didn't like each other that they didn't like each other everyone knew they dated afterwards but i had no idea (laughs) yeah they dated afterwards but they did hate each other but i think it's also because ryan gosling the method actor and probably Mm. was very serious and rachel was probably like dude stop yeah cameras are off like relax (laughs) yeah Yeah. there is a sequel to the novel it's called the wedding was published in 2003 and it follows jane ali and Noah's daughter as she falls in love with a man named wilson and ryan gosling was initially surprised by the by the fact that they wanted to hire him for the role he said i read the script and i thought he's crazy i i couldn't be more wrong for this movie it gave me an opportunity to play a character over a period of time from 1940 to 1946 that was quite profound and formative. And if you think about it, besides Crazy Stupid Love, Ryan Gosling's roles are kind of all over the place, but he doesn't really tap into these like epic romances. romances. Yeah. It was nice to see him in a romantic comedy. Like he, I think he does well in it. Um, mm-hmm. I think the closest thing to this maybe might be La La Land, but he's definitely more gritty dramas that he's in. And the notebook is the most successful Nicholas Sparks adaptation. I'm not surprised. It's the best one. All right. Before we get into the ratings, don't forget to check out Christina on Instagram. X underscore Tina with two A's Lynn with two N's. And you can check us out at No More Late Fees on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And now we're going to get into our ratings. Now, Christina, you're an adult now. Now that you rewatched the movie from would buy it, would buy it again, five day rental, two day rental, or same day rental, what would your rating be? I think my rating is going to stay the same five day rental. I do revisit this movie once every like six months, I would say. So that's why I'm not going to give it. It's not like a movie that I watch that often on repeat, but definitely like one to two times a year. That that's a lot to me, Christina. I mean, it kind of is like there's other movies that I watch a little bit more frequently, but yeah, this is definitely one that I revisit when I want to like be in my feels. (laughs) Actually, on my own, without 
I watched it like three months ago <laughs> before rewatching it specifically for this. So that's why I was like, know. what movie would you like to do? The notebook? I was like, Oh yeah. Right. I was like that fresh works. on my mind. Yeah. I'm not a huge movie buff, so I don't watch, you know, not like it's you not. guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't watch a ton, <laughs> but this is definitely up there on the, the movies on repeat. I'm I'm gonna stay with my initial rating, which was would buy it. I thought after rewatching it that I was gonna have like a lot of critiques, and I was surprised. It still held up. It it's not bad. I like it. I enjoy it. <laughs> it's Jackie. a same day rental Trash. for me. Yeah, I. Eh, no thanks. Okay, I have to ask you though. What romantic movies? move you like name one that like does it for you every time or is, is it just not your thing because that's it, a fair answer it's too it's just i like yeah there are very i can't even think of one off the top of my head like i enjoy rom-coms but it's not the romance that typically gets me it's more the comedy so, yeah i can't even think okay so then th it makes sense to why this was not your jam yeah because this is like romantic wait there's like no comedy i would say very little comedic relief in here right yeah it's just uh, melodramas are not my jam at all all right i get it now <laughs> Well, if you want to argue that the notebook <laughs> is good, it's a better quick drop, 909-601-6653, 909-601-NMLF. You can twat us at the Twitters or leave a message on our Anchor FM account, and you could be featured on a future episode. Christina, girl, thank you. Thank you yes, for joining us. Thank you so much thank for, you for having us. me. This was so fun. Join us next week as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of Deliver Us from Eva. And as always, be kind and rewind.